Hello, thank you for learning more about Experience Space, the new user interface soon to be introduced in SDL Trading Insights 9.5. In this session, we'll see how to use Experience Space for common daily editorial tasks. Hi, I'm Alvin, a product owner with SDL. Hello, and I'm Anton Minko. I'm also a product owner for SDL Trading Insights. So we'll talk briefly on the persona we're addressing with Experience Space. Then we'll run a demo, look at the site's 9.5 scope, and see where we're going next. To make this demo easier to follow, Anton, you suggested we use a hypothetical walkthrough. Exactly, Alan. So um, let's imagine that we run through a day in the life of an editor who need to um, create a couple of uh, assets and then compose a page and publish it to staging website to see how it looks like. Yeah, let's get into the demo and see how uh, our persona, Anna Gaili here, would walk through the system. Okay, so how might the user find something to edit or uh, run through this site? Okay, so I'm looking at, uh, I guess, pieces of, of content in the in the system, and over here we see. Okay, you're 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 hovering over something that looks like a an article. Uh, how might I find more information uh, about this piece of of content? Oh, okay, the info panel. And what can we learn here, Anton? Yeah, so this is at the. It's pretty recently edited uh, item, and uh, it have version four. And as we see here in the list, we also see it here that it has article schema. So that's okay. something that we probably uh, should look at. Okay, and if I wanted to see like like a preview, yeah, okay, like the like the stuff. Is this is this stuff in the uh, component or content? Yes, yeah, that's uh, real uh, content, uh, real fields from this component. We can see content here as well as metadata. There is no metadata in this example, but um, we can see it without actually going into this component and open it, uh, opening it up uh, full screen. Okay. And you mentioned there's versions. How could I see uh, you know, this histor history over the item. Yeah, so there is a history panel uh, which shows you um, version history and also allow you to uh, navigate or see previous versions if needed. Okay, okay. Um, and I understand a feature of Tridian Sites is, is this blueprinting capability where stuff is shared through the system. How might I learn about how the item is, is shared? Yeah, you ask exactly correct uh, <laughs> questions so that I can click through all panes uh, one by one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not I'm not leading the witness just to uh, to be clear. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, indeed uh, we have a blueprint uh, view of this component so that we see that it is shared into two uh, publications. Mm. And we also can check that there is no uh, localization of this uh, component. Okay, okay. But this item isn't like automatically used in places or published, right? Like, uh, I understand this is a piece of content. It might appear elsewhere. How can I see where else this item is used? Yeah, exactly. There is a way used pane, uh, which uh, shows you both uh, directions on the uh, content usage. So on the in use by, we see that uh, uh, our component, com complete system, it is used on the complete system web page. Okay, okay. On the other tab, makes use of, we see uh, what our component, component 
actually makes use of. So, so it's based on article schema and it contains inside a link to this uh, banner image. Okay, I think that that's important. You mentioned the, the schema is of type article. So if we wanted to make something like this, we would make another article. Exactly. Okay. And, and then, probably uh, we, need, we need some banner. Okay. So that I, I'm guessing that's coming up later in the demo. <laughs> so uh, how would I check if this item is 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 published across you know all those publications? Yeah, there is a published to main where we can see that uh, it's published to uh, four four hundred example website to to a staging website of it, and uh, uh, there is also a still demo website, and there we had published it. Uh, this component both to staging and live. Okay, so I, I, that gives me a good feeling about the impact of of changes uh, to an article. It's a nice balance of control and capabilities in, in a few clicks. Uh, so what's next for our author? What would a request look like yeah. to make new content? What do we have as a request? Um, yeah, so indeed we need to create uh, uh, something of content type article. So using our article schema uh, and uh, yeah, its component should be named upcoming release. So let's start with this. And that's just the example request, right? It, uh... Yes, exactly. Awesome. So let's create a new component. We know it's title upcoming release and uh, schema is article. Okay, so uh, I saw that there is a, an image, banner image. So let's also use it. Okay, so it's our banner. And the subheading was uh, short title. And the content is, oh, I was wrong. So this should go as a subheading. Mm -hmm. And this will go over rich text. Okay. Do we want to share some news about rich text? OK, so one of the. Are we still role playing? <laughs> so, or should I, can I just mention that uh, we have clean paste? So, uh, how would I see how the formatted uh, text comes across from from Word? Because I know Word has often has uh, styles and everything in it. Um, oh, that's nice. Okay, you have full screen, so you can see like a big block of, of rich text to be edited. How about I check this the source? Let's see how source looks like. Okay. So I see I, I see H3s paragraphs. Yeah, fair, fairly fairly clean coming uh, coming from Word. Yeah. That's pretty decent, doable. And then if you still don't uh, trust um, rich text, I think there's also an option for for plain text. I believe. When I paste. When you paste. Indeed, there, are, there are two paste button. Uh, I can get paste just clean text without any formatting. Okay. Okay, so let's try to save it. And now I see that uh, I forget to put heading. It's mandatory field. Uh, I also see this uh, exclamation mark on the top, which contains error. Uh, so it should be upcoming release. Yeah, some nice inline validation there. And now I can, indeed I can save it. Now I finish it. Um, it might be workflow associated with the schema. And in this case, uh, I will not really check in an item, but just uh, progress it to the next workflow step. In our case, it, mm, we can check in our 
new component. Cool. Okay. Um, so having a new component, uh, what else do we need? We also need to use a couple of images. Uh, so let's navigate to images folder. I see a couple of images here. Uh, I can also quickly check what they are. Yeah, so it looks fine. Let's create a new one. So here, uh, my schema was pre-selected because it is linked schema for the images folder. And what do I have here is a drop area. So I can just dra drag and drop files uh, and they will become uh, content of my multimedia component. Here I also see uh, what uh, file extensions are will be accepted by this schema. So if there is another schema, um, like default multimedia schema, list of file formats will be, of course, different. So let's try to drag and drop something. And here I have a WebP image. It's a new file format that is uh, fully supported by the new UI, so, so that we can uh, see thumbnails of it, preview. I see that it was uploaded in a uh, good quality. Uh, also, by default, uh, name is used uh, uh, is set as a file name. I can uh, fix it if I need. Okay. And when I click finish, I was redirected to metadata because I had to also provide alternate text. Nice. So like release. Cool. Uh, with this image, um, what comes with, uh, with the request is that uh, we know that uh, it should be adjusted for for our 500 uh, uh, demo website uh, because we made our target group analysis uh, and uh, figured out that there, there is another version of image that might work better for some regions. Okay. So let's let's explore uh, uh, how can we localize our image. So we created it in 300 publication. Mm -hmm. and I want to localize it in 500. So what can I do? I can just click here on the publication and I will be redirected to the same folder but in the 500 context. Okay. So, so now I change it, uh, my context of publication from 300 to 500. Yeah, so um, I can open it here. And as it is shared item, I cannot directly uh, edit it. Uh, but I still have edit component button, and here I have an option. So either I can go to parent, so go back to 300 publication and edit it there. Or can, uh, I can also localize and edit it in the current context. That's what I need. Okay. Uh, so here I want to replace my image. Let's localize it version. Okay, so this is what I need for 500 publication. Okay, so now we have uh, image and content. Uh, how do we put this together in you know some kind of uh, page or experience? Exactly. Now we need to compose some page. So where should we start? We should start again from the 300 publication. Just in the home structure group, let's create a new page. It will be, please. And I see that uh, by default content page uh, template is used, but that's not what I need. So I will untick uh, inherit from parent checkbox, and now I see all the available component templates, and the one that I need is a home page. So immediately there are some uh, regions have been generated for me, so that I know that there is a hero 
um, region article and further info, some optional parts that um, I need to insert. So let's uh, add file name. and insert some components. So uh, unlike of the previous versions, uh, item selector shows in place, so, so we don't have like, multiple windows. Um, where was our uh, images? So I have a Shuttershock image. And I want to add it as a cursor into hero region. Oops, I pasted it just on the page. I, I want to have it in, in hero region. So I just drag and drop. You see that I cannot drop it in article because article uh, region has some constraints, but I can drop it into hero. Um, and there is also another banner that I want to use. And as you can see, component template have been pre-selected because that's the only one available for the hero region. So let's do insert. And now our component that we just created. It's upcoming release. Again, component template pre-selected. And that's it. We are done with populating the page. Uh, as you can see, we are still on the page, on the new page, uh, but we also see the content of our components so that we mm. can review them. Uh, the, the actual co content of these items. That's pretty handy, I believe. Is this where I'm supposed to point out a, a typo? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, indeed. Like if you want to edit uh, the component, can we change it here? Yeah, so, so we have a typo in the heading upcoming. Uh, and indeed, I can, I have an edit button here. Let's see how it works. So in inside of the page, I'm now uh, editing component, another item. And one as I type this, as you can see, there is a blue dot appeared that says that uh, this component has unsaved changes. There is also a blue dot on the page. So now I'm editing two distinct uh, items. Mm. So let's finish. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, and my component was edited. Again, it's not part of the page, we really edited another item. Um, and now we can go back to a page, review, everything looks fine. And we're done. Nice. So what's next? Okay, so we made changes, content, images, uh, I guess getting the the changes live or or to to the, that staging uh, environment or target we mentioned. How would we go ahead and publish this? Um, okay, so um, we created page in the three hundred publication, but uh, it's not publishable from here. So let's switch context. Yeah, so we can publish it here. Uh, and here we see a new publish dialog. So what's uh, prominent here is that you can select not only targets where you want to publish to, so in our case we want to publish to DXA staging. It was pre-selected because it was uh, my choice of publishing uh, last time when I published another page. Mm -hmm. So it was uh, remembered. But what's new is uh, publish item, uh, items in publications. So what happens here is that I have my 400 publication, but I also have one or more child publications. And if uh, publishing is configured in these pub child publications, I will see them in this list. 
so that I can selectively publish to one or more channel publications. Okay. That allows to do pretty fine grained publishing. Definitely a, a use case that I've I've, I've seen uh, requested and and um, needed in a lot of implementations. Yeah, uh, a lot of people in our community uh, requested this function uh, feature in uh, one or another way. So that's how it is implemented in 9.5 and only in the uh, experience space. Nice. Okay, so then we need to see uh, how this item is doing, I guess, in, in a, a queue of sorts, a publishing queue? Correct. Um, at the moment, publishing queue is not in the new UI yet. So we need to switch to the classic UI for this uh, task. And what do we see here is that there are two published transactions for yeah. our 2020 release for 400 and 500 publication. Is this it? Nice. For the first time in a while, actually, I actually didn't have to click around, so that was much appreciated. Thank you so much. Um, You're <laughs> so let's talk about what's what's what else is planned or and what's in scope for for experience space uh, for sites 9.5. So if we look at our persona again, it's about exploring content and relationships, uh, the rich text editing improvements, the inline field validation. If you configure that on your schemas, you can also do regular expressions, min, max, uh, number constraints, things like that. And then the full editorial flow to create, update, cut, copy, paste, delete, publish, unpublish, localize, and unlo unlocalize items. Um, also included is external content library. We're planning that out uh, now and, and working on this. Um, so this will be the next last piece of functionality we get into Sites 9.5. Cool. And uh, yeah, well, it's great because we're working on this together and it's uh, nice to get uh, this address for the release. In the next slide, there's a couple other things. Uh, some of the nice things we worked on is the CM side caching. So for classic UI and experience space, uh, we have CM side caching for uh, a boost of uh, performance for that. Also, time zones are in the client's time. In the database, they, they've been updated um, to UTC. But if you're connecting to it through either UI, the time zones will reflect the user's uh, local settings, which is also a nice improvement. And the same for uh, uh, API clients. So, so it's... Uh... Be careful when you're reading uh, some content and uh, checking time. It now will be returned uh, in API in UTC. Yes, definitely useful. If you're an implementer or on the technical side when you're going into upgrade, uh, keep that in mind when you look at any custom reports uh, talking over the, like the core service, for example. I mentioned rich text uh, formatting differences. This will be documented uh, on release. But uh, if you want, you can pause and look through some of the changes. Most of these are, are to conform to you know, current HTML standards. There are some functionality that's not in this release that we'll address. Uh, do give us feedback if you're looking for something in, in particular. And beyond uh, Tridian Sites 9.5, we have uh, a couple of things already on our mind for, for future releases. Uh, specifically, uh, the publishing queue, uh, notification centers, uh, less frequently used actions, and developer tasks and extensibility. So, for example, right now there's no uh, schema editing in Experience Space yet. In a future release, we'll we'll come back and and revisit the that item type and 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 everything else. Well, that's pretty dark slide for uh, for our bright future. <laughs> so I should I, in the edit we can we could change it to something brighter. I'll put something in there. <laughs> okay, uh, experience base is based on your input, input from customer interviews, user experience sessions, and a pilot period, along with ideas and usability enhancements from support, SDL ideas, SDL community, and events uh, we've attended. 
I, I remember the idea for select publishing and child publications uh, and not including the parent. That, that was brought up at, at uh, the Trading Developer Summit. So Indeed, we need... it, it was uh, on TDS 2019. Uh, yeah. yeah. So after getting this feedback, we quickly implemented this top checkbox with context publication so that now you can untick it and uh, publish only two selected child publications. Awesome, awesome. And we need this continued feedback from customers and editors, especially on changes that impact daily work like Rich Checks editing. So please visit SDL Ideas and submit, vote, comment, and follow your enhancement requests. Uh, so, uh, speaking of product ideas, before we end, I wanted to ask you, which of yes. the experience based features are your favorite? I'll give you mine first. Personally, I like the rich text pasting behavior, and that's a, almost a tie with the schema column, which was a popular idea we were able to, to get into 9.5. So what would be your favorite? My uh, favorite is definitely in context editing of uh, components on the pages. So we debating a lot whether we should enable this functionality, whether we should stop at just uh, showing preview, so read-only components, but in the end we made them editable. Uh, and uh, I think it's a, a really great uh, time saver when you prepare a page, you can quickly review it and fix some minor uh, issues uh, without uh, going out from the page editor. That's a great improvement I do. And I agree. It, it, it's awesome. Thanks, Anton. So that's our uh, pre-recorded webinar. Thanks for learning about the persona we're addressing in uh, this release, especially with Experience Space. You saw our demo. You heard about changes and some plans for the future. Uh, we look forward to hearing from you uh, and your feedback for Sites 9.5 when it comes out. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you for being with us.